Hey, this video is going to talk about RF samplers, um, about why might you want to use them and a couple of examples of design of them. So an RF sampler, is, uh, or sometimes called an RF sampling T, is something that's used to pick off a very small amount of an RF signal that you would use for test purposes. And uh, for example, if you want to, you're working on, say, an, a transmitter, like you know, maybe this uh, you know, little Yaesu FT817, this puts out about 5 watts. But you might be working on a radio that uh, that puts out you know, 10 watts, 50 watts, 100 watts, or maybe an amplifier that puts out uh, several thousand watts or something like that. And you wouldn't want to directly connect, you know, uh, that kind of RF energy directly into an oscilloscope or a spectrum analyzer, something like that, because uh, they can't take that kind of power. But you know, normally when you're testing a rig like this or, or doing some work on it, you might want to test how it's performing at its full rated power. So how do you do that? And that's kind of where you know the sampler again comes into play. So uh, this is kind of so we're going to use the sampler to pick off a small sample of that signal. Here's a quick schematic example. So we've got uh, the RF transmitter comes in. The sampler is going to allow the bulk of the energy to simply pass through and go out to usually a dummy load, which is just a uh, a simple known resistive load for the transmitter to dump its power into without radiating out in the air like connecting to an antenna. So it allows you to test the transmitter at full rated power. The sampler then will pick off a very small sample of that. Okay, it's kind of like you know, sticking your ear against the wall trying to hear what's going on in the other room. Okay, it's going to take that small sample of that that you can then couple into your scope or your spectrum analyzer or maybe a, a deviation meter or whatever instrumentation you might be using to characterize what's going on with that RF transmitter. So, um, so let's look at a couple of examples of how these things can be made. Uh, one example is like a resistive sampler, which is just simply a resistive voltage divider. Okay, RF energy from your transmitter comes in here, okay, and then just simply goes all the way out to your load or dummy load here. And you could simply have a resistor divider, and you can set these resistor values to get whatever attenuation value you want to get a small sample out. Even if you're dealing with very, very large voltage levels and power levels here, you can get a very small sample out here by adjusting the resist resistors appropriately. Um, the downside to this is that at high frequencies, the capacitive react or the parasitic capacitance around these, you know, associated with these components, is going to start to dominate this divide ratio. So these are good for lower frequencies, HF and below, and with careful design you can get up into you know VHF regions, but uh, that's about where they're limited to. Uh, so you don't see them used very often, but you certainly can, and it's a very simple thing to build. Um, I built an example here that was in one of my other videos talking about monitoring your ham radio with a scope, and I built this as a demonstration vehicle um, you know, all open design here, which you wouldn't normally want to do this. If you're going to build something like this, you'd probably put it in you know, a little metal case like this, be able to seal it up. Because this has got everything exposed, and you really don't want that because you don't want this to radiate. You don't want to be, a, be able to touch where your RF signal is coming through, especially if you're dealing with any power. But this is just shown as an example. So don't build them like this for use, but uh, this just kind of shows what it looks like. So if we just ignore the DMOD section over here, we're just talking about the RF sampler side here take a close look at this. Hopefully this is focusing in okay. Okay, We can see the, the signal comes in here, goes across this wire back out. That's my direct RF in and out path. Okay, and Then there's a resistor divider. Okay, We have a re you know, resistor here, another resistor to ground, and then we're tapping off of that with an AC coupling cap into, you know, and that's kind of optional, into the sample port, which would then go off to the scope or spectrum analyzer. Okay, So again, you wouldn't want to build it like this. You really want to build it kind of shielded. But that's simply what a, a, a resistive sampler would look like. Now the other type, and the much more common type, I think, is uh, the capacitive uh, type of sampler like this. And again, you still have a direct RF path from your transmitter out to you know, your load connected out here. Okay, And then t simply, a usually a small adjustable capacitor, just coupled to that line. And in, in some cases, like in the cases of like a station monitor for ham radio, there's usually a selection of variable, a selection of capacitors that essentially couple RF energy into the vertical deflection plates of a scope. That's how that works. But in most standalone um, samplers, this capacitor is really nothing more than just uh, an adjustable air gap between the transmission line and some kind of a slug. Okay, that's in the sampler. And I've got a couple of examples here. Okay, here's one here I picked up on eBay a couple years ago. 
This one's made by a company called uh, uh, Micro Lab. Okay, if that's focused in there or not. Okay, and uh, so this is the main RF path here through these end connectors. One you know, in through here, through and out through here. Okay, uh, so that's our direct path. So in here is the sampling section, and uh, the way this works, you see this thing is kind of adjustable, kind of in and out. So this is kind of our sampling section. Let's pull this out and look at it. So basically it's just a BNC connector, it'll be our, our sample output here. Okay, the other end of this, uh, I'm gonna see if I can get this thing to focus in here. Okay, see the other end of this is just kind of a little metal slug, and that's connected directly into the center conductor of the BNC. And if we take a peek inside here, you might be able to see kind of that line section, and basically that's just a conductor that's connecting the center pin of this end connector to the center pin of that connector. And you can see when you assemble this thing, all we're doing is, you know, putting this thing in here, let me loosen this up, and you can adjust the spa spacing from that, that slug at the end of this assembly, adjusting the spacing of that to that transmission line. So that essentially sets the value of that capacitor. The further the way it is, the smaller the capacitance and the less coupling you're going to have. So I could pull this way out here and maybe have, you know, 80 or 100 dB of attenuation from, from here to here, you know, or something like that. But, uh, but you can adjust this kind of in or out to get the amount of coupling you want to couple, you know, part of that RF signal into your scope, spectrum analyzer, deviation meter, whatever it is that you happen to be using. So that's a simple example. And, you know, if you're handy with... Uh, with you know copper pipe and some RF connectors, you could probably build something like this yourself for pennies. Okay, just by making yourself a couple of uh, you know pieces, soldering in some RF connectors, and away you go. So another commercial example of this same concept is this guy right here. This one is made by uh, by Bird, same people that make uh, the Bird watt meters, and uh, this has got the same QC type of connectors where you can change these out from N to UHF or other connector types. There's my sample port coming out here, and this guy right here, you just move this lever, and this is the adjustable tap, where I can adjust the tap up or down, okay, to adjust the coupling for different frequencies. So that's just a, another commercial version, very high quality version of um, this capacitive sampler, and they work just fine. Now something interesting you might find if you keep your eyes open is... Um, Bird also kind of built this into one of their 43 watt meters. Now, you, most guys that work with RF are familiar with uh, the old Bird 43. This guy right here, okay, that's a Model 43. Great little meters, your you know, replaceable slugs to change the power. Very accurate, kind of the standard of the industry. Well, Bird made a version of this with a built-in coupler. Okay, that's this one back here, and that's a Model uh, 4431. Okay. So it looks very much the same, except it has this knob right here. It says RF sample increase output. And if you look, I don't know if we could see this or not. Let me pull the slug out. You might be able to just see the shadow behind that, uh, maybe just barely see behind that line section back there. A little bit of a shadow of a hole. And behind that hole is a little metal slug that can be adjusted in or out by adjusting this knob up or down. And then that samples some of that RF output, and it comes out of... Uh, this BNC port right here that you could bring in, bring into your scope, or your spectrum analyzer, or whatever it is that you're, you know, you may be using to test your device. So this happens. This is a really handy version of the Bird 43 that will allow you to, um, you know, basically couple and maybe monitor your the transmitter output on a scope or spectrum analyzer at the same time you're watching power and things like that. So, um, but that's a very handy version of uh, of that meter. So uh, you might want to keep an eye out for that when, if you're at HamFest or something like that. So that's a basic tutorial of uh, RF samplers and uh, what they're used for and uh, how they're made and uh, maybe some ideas of how you might go build your own for, uh, for your own testing purposes.